to this week's edition of Crimepedia and we've got a special edition for you this week. Um, I presented a case to you guys um, a couple of weeks ago and it was the case of a man called Stuart Lubbock and it was one that's quite it's quite a famous case in the UK but probably more so for the people involved than um, Stuart himself and this has become something that we have been it's sort of a household name kind of case and I explained to everybody what happened and we went through the kind of things we think happened because it's a really really confusing case there's quite a lot of miss there's missing evidence there's quite a lot of stories that just do not correlate and it's a really difficult case to kind of get your head around um in a nutshell I'll remind you about what happened um the case is a is about a guy called Stuart Lubbock, like I said, and unfortunately he passed away whilst he was at a party in Essex. And st- to start with, when the police got there, it seemed like an accident. Stuart was found in the pool um, and it seemed like an accident. But after going to the hospital and with his post-mortem, things started to not look like it was an accident at all. And Stuart was reported to have some really horrific internal injuries, which could have only been caused by somebody else. Um, And we talked through what we thought could have happened and the missing evidence. And I started to talk to um, a really lovely lady called Sue. And Sue was married to Stuart a long time ago. Um, She's not the mum of his kids. I know I've read a few things where it said that Stuart's daughters are with Sue, but actually they're not. And Sue has really kindly um, agreed to come and talk to us today. So joining us today is Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi. Hello. How are you both? Um, So thank you very much for joining us for our episode. And it's really, it's really nice to catch up with you and go through some of the things we've talked about sort of between us. Um, So you, you and Stuart were married. Yeah. Yep. And you were childhood sweethearts, weren't you? Because I saw in the documentary, I saw your wedding photos. Oh, so young. So young. We got (laughs) married. I was only 19. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so how did you two meet? How did you know each other? Oh, we met. He was working at the time in a, um, like a Mr. Minute uh, shoe repairs. Okay. Okay. Um, and I just walked past and he just started talking to me. And that was <laughs> the start of it, really. <laughs> oh, and you, because when you look back, it's like you can tell it was a long time ago because you can tell by yeah. like the wedding trends, can't you? And your oh, beautiful God, big yeah. dress and big hair. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like it was a good wedding, though. Everyone looked like they were having a really good time. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that dress like... is massive. I've still got the dress. Have you? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge yeah. dress. If you haven't seen the documentary, Sue's dress is, is huge. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a massive big wedding dress. It's really nice. And the wedding well, looked don't, like it would be we- fun. Don't wedding trends or, you know, wedding dresses and wedding trends, they kind of, it's a kind of circular, right? So so what it what might be old today <laughs> will one day become something <laughs> yeah. else in style. In another, so, yeah, so hold on to that. 30 years. <laughs> I'll wear it again 30 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah so yeah we we i yeah i did like the way i love weddings i did love the wedding video it was quite cute and you took part in the documentary as well so we got to you know got to see you in the documentary and that must have been a bit weird yeah very <laughs> yeah it yeah because i've weird. never yeah i've never spoken out or done anything before the documentary so um yeah that was the first time i had done something like that Oh, and it must be, it's quite a hot, obviously, it's a devastating hard topic to talk about as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not very nice. So, you obviously, you and Stuart weren't together when he passed away. No. No. So, how did you find out what had happened? The lady that was with me in the documentary at the beginning, mm. um, she was our bridesmaid. So, she's a long-time friend. Oh. Um, and it was her that actually called me. Um, I was seven months pregnant with my daughter, oh, and she no. just 
called me up one morning and she just said to me, so it's Stuart. But she, I didn't know anything that anyone had passed away at Barry Mars. I didn't know anything at all. Mm. I'm thinking, what? She's like, you know, Michael Barrymore. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you don't? I'm like, no, what? what's going no. on? Yeah. She's like, it's Stuart. Like, he's died. And I'm like, what? My my Stuart? Like, Stuart Lambert? She's like, yeah. I'm like, what? So then I just, like, rushed down and put the telly on and it, I just couldn't believe it. It's just crazy. No, that must have been weird. Really weird. I was just... I don't know, you know, it just goes through your head like, why was he at Mar- Barrymore's house and has he end up past like, what happened? And then as time went on, you know, you hear about a gay orgy and I'm like, there's no way it's a blooming gay orgy and a sex orgy. Oh, it's just like crazy, all the things you heard. Mm. Um, just none of it made sense, really. And that's the thing, isn't it? Obviously, with the newspapers and everything, they kind of sensationalise everything. And you can tell, like, the different headlines and stuff. It makes, mm. tries, They try and make it sound so much more sinister. And so mm-hmm. I mean, a, a lot of people have, that know Stuart that have come forward in the papers have said there was no way that he was there for that reason. There was no way that he was gay. No. No. No, not at all. And obviously, he didn't know, he didn't know Michael Barrymore or anybody else at that party either because he just met them that night, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he didn't know any of them. I think he'd seen, like, because, you know, Stuart's always lived in Harlow, so you get to know people through, you know, work, school, things like that. So a lot of faces you recognise. So he most probably recognised a couple of them, but not as a friend and somebody that he really knew, like, outside sort of thing. Mm. So the... the, um... So what kind of guy was Stuart? I mean, he looks to when you just obviously we don't know him, but when you look at the pictures of him and you obviously at your wedding and, and the video of that, because that's the only sort of videos we've seen of him, he looks like a really kind of happy go lucky, kind of a little bit crazy, a bit fun. Yeah, that's that was just him. Like, as you see him in the video wedding video, sorry, like smiling and joking, and that was just generally him all the time. Um, he wasn't a bad person at all. Like he wouldn't maliciously go out. He'd always help people. Mm. Um, yeah, he was just you know. Sometimes I suppose to some people it would be like, oh, Stuart again, like always smiling and joking. You know, like sometimes like, oh, just give me a break. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but um, he, he was. He wasn't. You know, he loved his car. He loved his family. Um, football. And just worked <laughs> hard, and that was it. Yeah. So, like, by the sounds of things, I mean, obviously, if you were at a club and there's somebody who's like a celebrity there that says, "Oh, you know, we're having a party, come back," he sounds like the kind of guy that's going, "Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'm coming. No worries." Yeah, who wouldn't? Especially exactly. back then, because you never yeah. saw, like, you know, there was no social media, so you didn't no. know anything about these people really. Only what you read in the paper. Mm. So. Yes, especially back then, who wouldn't? That's right, you would, you wouldn't know. you? If you're out clubbing yeah. and somebody like that offers you time to come back, you'd be like, yeah, definitely, I'll, you know. Yeah, and Stuart would have thought in his head, oh, yeah, you know, work tomorrow or the next day, saying to people, I've been at Barry Moore's house, it'll be a laugh. <laughs> and that's yeah. what he would have been like. Yeah. And, Chair, I was going to ask you, and I know I've asked you before, like, how... <sighs> how big of a celebrity would he have been at this time? Right. So I'd look at him as, okay, this guy does, you know, some cheesy game show, the cheesy game show host. So how excited would you really be if, if you ran into Michael Barrymore? Yeah, you would be, you would be quite excited because back then he was a household name. He was like, yeah, I suppose he's like Ant and Deck now or Simon Cow, you know, someone that everyone knew, didn't they? Yeah, every, I think, I think so, every, everyone knew of yeah. him. Yeah, all age groups, older people would know him, younger people would know him. Like every, I think everybody's a he was a household name, so you would be excited if you saw him. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I can see why I can see why he would have gone back mm. and been, you know, and been excited. So, um, so obviously we, you then found out that something had happened to Stuart what kind of happened following following that because to start with it was kind of an it was an accident and it was somebody had drowned in the pool 
how did things sort of how did you find out what was going on um god I still use I used to keep in contact with Dot Stuart's mum a lot Mm. um and she come around she brought me all the witness statements and you know everything else like she was like I can't make tell of it like what's yeah. going on I don't know um and then then it come out really like you know they don't believe he just drowned because of the water and things like that and it it just seems so crazy and just none of it made sense I mean even well I know that there was drugs drugs found in his body but even when I knew him he wouldn't even smoke a cigarette he was just so anti drugs and everything. So in my head, I was thinking, none of this is true. I know, like, you know, that things change and things like that. And he apparently was taking drugs, but I didn't know him that way. No. So in my head, that was even more confusing. Like, he wouldn't take drugs. I didn't believe that at first. Mm. And it's. Um, the whole thing with this, isn't it? It is strange. I mean, when you look at the witness statements, they they don't make sense. Like that, they all sort of contradict each other. Yeah, completely, completely. Which I think know. is yeah, is is a bit strange. Yeah, at the beginning, someone found found him at the bottom of the pool, face down. Then someone else found him floating at the top, face up. The other one floating at the top, face down. It was just like, what is happening? Like, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, sadly, um, Stuart's mum isn't with us anymore, is she? Am I right in thinking no. that? Yeah, yeah she's not no. with us anymore. So, no. and and talking of um, Stuart's parents, when when we first started looking into this, we had um, I had a look on social media to see if I could find Stuart's dad because I saw an article about him talking about the case and, and wanting to find justice. So I thought, oh, I'll reach out and see. Um, and I got a message back. And then after speaking to you, found out that the person that was obviously messaging me back isn't actually um terry Mm -hmm. at all so yeah terry hasn't got he hasn't even got like an ipad a laptop uh he hasn't even got a smartphone he can only call people he doesn't text message he's got no internet so Mm. he he doesn't see anything the only thing that he hears and sees is what's on the telly because especially with covid at the moment he's not even getting a daily paper no of course so in his head right now, it's like nothing is happening because he's not seeing it on the telly because he doesn't yeah. see it, anything else. And it's hard, isn't it? Because obviously he's, is he late 70s now? Yes, he's 76. Yeah, so he's like in his late 70s as well. And so it must be, that must be really, really hard because it isn't on the, it isn't on the TV all the time now. And obviously if things no. are happening elsewhere, you're not going to see it on in the in the press and stuff like that at the moment no. um so it must be bless him it must be it must be really hard for him mm-hmm. and obviously yeah. for you as well this i mean obviously you guys were married a long time ago but still this is something that is still a part of your life all these years on as well yeah of course of course and i still yeah. care for terry a lot you know i do really care for him so yeah and I hope, I mean, for us, I, when we looked into this, not knowing, obviously, we don't know Stuart, we don't know anybody connected with the case. And when we were reading through it before I spoke to you, it it just, I don't, a lot of it, I just don't understand. A lot of it we've looked through and gone, okay, well, okay, well, so this happened. And then they've said that this has happened. And then I've read through the um, the reports from, obviously, we know that when the police came, the scene was treated as a an accident. It was treated as somebody had been drinking and fallen in the pool and drowned. And to start with, that's the way they sort of treated the scene. Mm-hmm. And we know that there were um, people that were allowed back in on the scene that perhaps shouldn't have been and things have gone missing since they were allowed in and out. And for us i mean obviously the police are doing everything everything they can and they've they've already re- issued statements to say that it wasn't handled as it should have been in the very beginning and that they you know it would have been good if they could have changed things but unfortunately they can't and so when i look at this for me it's really frustrating for somebody who actually mm-hmm. knows Stuart, it must be so frustrating for you yeah all <sighs> It is because a lot of people are still saying, oh, Essex police and, you know, they're no good. But, you know, DCI Steve Jennings is really good. It is 
doing a lot of work on the case. Um, so people saying that, you know, they're corrupt and everything else, maybe 20 years ago when this happened, I don't know, maybe something happened, but, you know, they did go to a drowning. They didn't take it as anything else. But mm. Essex Police have said, we have made mistakes, but we're trying to put it right. So I don't feel there's any need to keep on bashing the police when they're trying to solve this case and they are working really hard on this. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with you. And it's and it's very easy to go back in hindsight and say, mm. well, why didn't this happen? Why didn't you do this? Why, yeah. didn't, why didn't they do that? It's very easy to go back and say that. But practices weren't as they are now back then. No. Things were no, things were so different back then. Yeah, so different. And it's like anything, you know, you you can't change the past, but we can make it better going forward. And that's what I feel like we all need to do. Mm. Yeah, I've read a lot about um um DR Jennings actually, and um it mm. looks to me like he's doing everything, doing everything he can. Um Yeah. So obviously we've got a high profile you know a high profile person involved in this and everybody's got their own thoughts on what happened and and it would just I think it would just be really nice to get some sort of answer um for you for his family for Stuart as well really just just so that mm. I mean we all know from looking at what we can see as just outsiders um we all know that this doesn't look it's not a straightforward thing. This doesn't look like Stuart, like, oh my God, like I read that Stuart slipped and, and hit the side of the pool and that's what causes injuries, which is absolutely ridiculous. That was yeah, just crazy. I mean, that came out literally just a few days before the documentary aired. Um, for all these years, it's been the, the hospital calls them in injuries to Stuart. That's all we ever heard um well I'd say I'm not blaming just Barrymore because it's you know they're all involved but mm. obviously Barrymore's the only one in the spotlight to be saying things so that's mm. all we're hearing um and it was obviously you have to approach them before the documentary to say that this is going out and that's when Barrymore turned around and said that Stuart slipped at the side of the pool and ripped his ass open and that's how he got the injuries yeah it's just like <laughs> I can't really shake my head <laughs> enough it's just <laughs> that's just crazy that's you know that's just like saying oh I slipped and fell and that's how I got pregnant it just I just <laughs> do you know I just I just, don't, just I don't understand that but if you think that then why do you think that because apparently you didn't see anything yeah yeah. So why now do you think that that is the cause? Mm. Because nobody saw of, anything. There's a lot of things when you when you look at this, mm. and even even as just looking at this from a completely obviously we've got nothing to do with the case internally, but just looking at the the things that people are saying, like you just said, it doesn't make sense. Like you mentioned earlier, somebody says that he was face down. Somebody says that he was at mm -hmm. the bottom of the pool. Somebody then says that um, Justin pulled him out. And then somebody else says that somebody else mm -hmm. pulled him out. And when they yeah. came out, he was already out. And it's like, okay, all of you were <laughs> at the party. There is somebody, if if not everybody, which I, I, I believe, but somebody there knows what happened to Stuart. Yeah. It's just common sense. Somebody there knows what happened mm -hmm. to him. This didn't happen to him on his own. There were only like eight people at that party so somebody know. must know what happened it's just at it's, least yeah, I find yeah at least one person at least yeah i just find that completely crazy that everybody's stories don't make sense and that, that you know things happen i mean obviously we know that as soon as it's reported that um, when they found Stuart and they were working on him, nobody made a phone call to 999 for like nearly an hour after they supposedly found him. Mm -hmm. And Morgan and I uh -huh. were saying like, what happened? How does that happen? How are you going to do CPR for a whole hour? That, I know. You I know, mean, five that does... minutes feels like an hour. So Yeah. And we said like, if you come upon an accident, the first thing you do is 
somebody phones what if, if you're trying to help mm-hmm. somebody if you're giving someone cpr the other people there somebody usually you go phone 999 that's the first thing you do yeah so that doesn't make sense to me reading from an outside point in it doesn't make sense that they were doing cpr for an hour before anybody phoned surely you would be doing cpr whilst somebody phoned mm-hmm. so that that doesn't that doesn't make doesn't. a lot of sense to me no and that was one of the things that we sort of because Morgan obviously is is in the US and so he didn't know anything about this case. So when I first started explaining to him, he was like, "What? Hang, hang on, hang on, what? How, how, how yeah, does that make much. sense? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. No, and of, at all. And of, no, and of course you don't know you don't know anything about Michael Barrymore. You don't know anything anything about his career or anything about this anything surrounding anything mm-hmm. of this. So it was." interesting from from my point of view to see what you thought when i just explained to you Mm. what what happened i think one of the things i told you i think this probably started out my my whole like what what was who's going swimming in england at that time of year are you insane (laughs) i mean this this isn't miami we're talking about (laughs) you know the weather could not have been that great oh yeah (laughs) Well, the pool hadn't been used that year. The pool so it wasn't uh, even heated at that time. No, oh, it hadn't been it must used. Have been freezing. So they had been in the jacuzzi, which makes sense. Okay, which they was in the jacuzzi, but then no one. Actually, I think it was Kylie that mentioned she saw Stuart in the pool throwing the cap. And she's the only person that apparently saw Stuart in the pool, but no one else did. See, that's just (laughs) mad, isn't it? This doesn't make sense. It seems like there's one person that saw Stuart doing one specific thing and no one else saw it, right? It's like you go through each and every one of them and they were like, okay, I saw him doing this, Mm. but no one else saw. Next person says, well, I saw him doing this. No one else saw. No one else. Mm. Mm -hmm. How, how How does that happen? I don't know, because even if you see the house, well, it's a bungalow, so it's all on one level, mm. and all the glass doors and windows, are le- you can see the garden. Mm. So it's not like a big mansion that people were saying about originally. It's just on one floor, and it's like a L-shaped sort of thing. Yeah, so you can so see most windows all the way around. You can see, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I we show I showed you the um, picture of the house, you know, the aerial view of the house, and you had a look, and, and you're like, well, "Hang on a minute, it's not a massive pool, it's not huge." No. And I was like, "No, no, not a big pool, it's not a big house." Yeah, no. <laughs> so you can see. So if you're inside, and as as long as you're like in one of the main rooms, and this is what I'm trying to figure out, you could just look out the window and see what people are doing outside. Yeah. Which is, but no one saw anything. But no, no one saw anything. Which (laughs) I just find that I just find that absolutely crazy. I do, and the fact that since then as well, no one has talked about it. So no one has come forward and said anything. There hasn't been anybody that's, you know, I know we've had a couple. There was a couple that had sold stories to the paper and been paid for them. I read that that yeah, some people have been paid to do stuff. But then there was reasons why other people haven't come forward. That we've mm-hmm. since found out there's reasons why they haven't. I'm sure you people can make their own mind up as to why. <laughs> 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 yeah, strange. Yeah. But, um, but I think, so how, we... I mean, our, uh, sorry, out of the eight people, uh, say five of them know. Hmm. Now, this is 20 years on. Are you telling me them five people have kept silent? about this big secret for so long. They must have told Somebody's somebody. told some, yeah. Of course they have. It's one of those things. That, I mean, people have a few drinks. They mm-hmm. get a bit more relaxed. I mean, also, in a partnership, if if yeah. you're married to somebody and, you know, that you've got that trust and, and that kind of thing, I'm sure somebody would have mentioned it to a partner or to a close family relative. Yeah. You know, somebody's got to have mentioned this to someone. Definitely. Yeah. And I think I must I must say, I think that you have been I think you've been really good with all of this. I think that 
you're very composed with it all and you must have read so much crap in the papers that makes you so angry and you haven't lashed out you haven't been blaming people for things you just want to know what happened you just want the truth yeah 100 percent. i mean you know i've seen on the front page of a paper years ago saying that i said what's barrymore doing with my hubby oh my god i'm thinking what <laughs> i've never even spoke to this paper i didn't speak to any papers then and i'm like how where's this come from that's awful yeah that's really bad I like it because they, they normally put in there a source close to the victim. And, and it's like, well, you know that that's just blatantly made up. Yeah. There's no source whatsoever. You've just you've just made that up. But I think, yeah, I think you have been brilliant, I think, with all of this. And there's a Twitter page that's a Justice for Stuart Twitter page that keeps um, lots of things up to date. And there's lots of um, things that you guys share on there. And that's the only official um, Twitter page, isn't it, for the Justice for Stuart? Yeah, there's nothing else. There's nothing else that's official out there. No, no, and that's good. Terry too. doesn't. Yeah. yeah, people can people can keep up to date with the case on that one. And um, yeah, and I think that you've done a brilliant job in sort of keeping this in people's minds. But without, I've never ever read anything or seen anything or heard you say anything about this is so and so's fault or this is all down to somebody else or nothing bad I think and I think you've done really well because I think if it was my family I would probably not be as composed and and, and react as well as you've done <laughs> it, it's not an easy subject it can't be easy for you especially when this is quite a high profile case and people do like to get involved and have their two pennies mm. worth in what's going on and yeah, no, thank you. It, it is really hard because a lot of times I do want to lash out or, you know, I'll call my friend to say, this person said blah, blah, blah. We'll mm. just talk about it and then that's it. It's done. It's over with. But I'm not going to go and say, oh, you know, it was um, Kenny that done it or Merritt that done it or Barrymore. Like, I don't know who done it, no. but we need to find out, you know, and people are saying, oh, Terry should leave it alone now and forget about it and things like that like seriously if that was your son your dad your brother you know any somebody that you was close to would you not want to know mm. and would you not want justice you know how did this person die I mean I think that's the thing that interests me so much in this case is that I look at it and think, well, this doesn't make sense. Nobody's come forward and held their hand up and said, look, this mm -hmm. was a horrible accident because quite obviously it wasn't. So somebody is holding back something because they know that this is wrong. They know that mm -hmm. the way the injuries that Stuart got weren't one, they weren't self-inflicted Two, they weren't an accident. So they know that they're going to be in trouble for what they've done. And I look at this and just think you shouldn't be allowed to get away with that. And yeah. Stuart, did nothing to deserve what happened to him. I don't know him, mm -hmm. but I don't think anybody deserves those kind of injuries. No. And I feel that this is really, I really feel for him. I really feel for his family. I'm a parent. If that was my child, mm -hmm. no matter what age, you wouldn't stop. And I don't blame, no. I don't blame you guys for keeping this going as much as you can because somebody, and I think more than one somebody, I think, people know what happened that night and mm -hmm. the person that did this needs like you say needs justice and justice needs to be done for Stuart yeah definitely and I hope that we can one day you know ring you up and go oh my god mm. it's over it's it's over we know what happened I hope that that day does that come. Just, I hope that comes yeah. to Terry so do I. I mean, Terry has got months left to live. Mm. Um, I can't tell you how much. I just hope even just a little bit of hope, just maybe one arrest or something mm. just before he goes. He, he really needs this. Yeah, I think he does need it. And it, it yeah, bless him. I think it would be... Um, it would be great for him to get that phone call from the police to say, right, we know, we know what's happened because then, you know, bless him. It, it can't be very nice. And obviously he's dealing with a lot at the moment health wise as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it can't be very nice and it can't be nice for you having to, this has always been part of your life for however long it would be nice for you to mm -hmm. get the answers that you deserve. 
and for also um, Kevin as well, Stuart's brother. Even though Kevin's older oh, than yeah. Stuart, yeah, um, Stuart was always like the older brother and looking after Kevin. Oh, um, Kevin's not well either. Um, oh, bless him. So I think he really, he really needs it as well. Yeah, it's hard. They just need. Yeah, it's really to hard. Know. I yeah, mean, me, I, if, yeah, if it was one of my children, oh, I don't know what, I'd, I'd be going mad. <laughs> yeah, I, really I, I agree with you. Yeah, mm. I agree with you. It's, I mean, we, we read through it and we've got pages and pages and pages that we were reading through and we were just like, I don't understand. This this just doesn't make sense. And when I was reading through the postmortems and it was, I was reading the first postmortem and then the second postmortem and then the third postmortem and it was like, wow, okay, hang on. <laughs> This doesn't this doesn't make sense either. And eventually they kind of got to the conclusion between the three of them that it didn't add up to a drowning in the end. And so even the pathologists have now, you know, they're in agreement that this is um not an accidental death and there's more to it than that. Mm-hmm. So we're keeping everything crossed and we will keep I would love to keep in touch with you and keep um checking in and seeing how you are and seeing how things are going. And I hope with everything that one day we'll get an answer and one day we'll be able to have a drink and celebrate the case being over. Oh, that'd be so nice, wouldn't it? So it would, nice. it'd be really nice. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for oh. talking to us today. It's been really lovely, as always, to talk to you. Um, yeah, and, you. yeah, if you would like to follow um, the case, Stuart's case, if you would like to follow on the, sh- on the social media, there is um, a page on Twitter uh, justice for Stuart page so you can go and check in on there and see what's going on in the case if this has been one we've had a lot of messages about it saying it doesn't make sense so you can actually do it from there and you can check and see what Sue and the gang are up to and how the case is proceeding I'm sure we'll see bits and bobs in the in the newspaper but I think I'll just um I'll ignore those I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah because they're probably not right yeah you're just not sure are you what well, that's oh don't know what's going to come out next sometimes <laughs> yeah that's right yeah so thank yeah. you thank you thank you both of you no problem, no problem.